Out to center. This is Kranz. It's way back. It is gone. Welcome to the Couch GM Podcast. Today, I am joined by Mariners outfield prospect, Johnny Fermello. Johnny was drafted in the first round of the 2023 MLB Draft by the Seattle Mariners with the 29th overall pick, which was technically the PPI pick, which is called the Prospect Promotion Incentive Pick that the Seattle Mariners actually won because they promoted Julio Rodriguez by a certain date in 2022. He ended up winning the Rookie of the Year that year, which netted the Mariners an additional pick immediately following the end of the first round. This prospect promotion incentive pick was added in the last round of the collective bargaining agreement to help incentivize teams to call up their top prospects sooner to potentially net an additional first rounder. And as Johnny mentions in this podcast, he hopes that one day when he is promoted to the big leagues that he could help net the Mariners an additional first round pick as well. I didn't really realize it till after the draft what, what that pick meant. I think it's pretty cool. Hopefully I can return the favor to the front office one day. There you, you go. Get the PPI. <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty cool. If you'd like to support the Couch GM brand, make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube. Go follow the Couch GM across social medias. And if you're listening to this on a podcast platform, make sure to give us a five star review. And if you or someone you know is thinking of buying, selling, or refinancing, you can visit lenderconnorweb.com to hit a home run with your mortgage financing needs. Now let's get into the podcast. All right, welcome back to the Couch GM Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Mariners outfield prospect, Johnny Fermello. So first off, Johnny, really appreciate you taking the time today. Of course, man. Thanks for having me. So I saw the Mariners post yesterday. I think we're a little under a month until players start to report to camp. Do you have a a report date to Arizona? Yeah, I think my uh, official report date is February 14th. Um, So I'll be going early for like a, a mini camp um, and I'll probably hopefully back up a few guys in big league games um, and get some work in there early. So maybe if I get lucky, I'll get in a game. That'd be exciting. Yeah. How, how's your off season been so far? Have you been back in Virginia? Yeah. Yeah. I'm back in Northern Virginia. Um, back staying with my family. It's been good. I got a, a really nice facility I go to. It's 15 minutes away. I uh, got a great hitting coach there, uh, great strength staff. So I've definitely gotten better, which is exciting. Is there anything in particular that you've been working on this off season? Yeah, yeah, a ton of stuff. Um, I'm always working on stuff with my swing, especially if I have a lot of time. Uh, so I think the bigger, biggest things for me were my bat path and my forward move. So just having a good bat path, having you know a bigger margin for error, Uh, being in the zone longer and then the forward move is just kind of my stride Uh, so being able to kind of control that and you know be on time awesome well we'll get into some more of you know current day but I'd like to get to know you a little bit about a bit bit about your background and how you got into baseball how you got into sports so let's go back to your childhood your upbringing Uh, you grew up in Westfield Virginia I believe so walk us through your upbringing, how you got into sports and baseball. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, my dad played soccer at Yale. Um, so I played soccer like right off the bat, really, as soon as I started walking, I was playing soccer. Um, but then I got kind of bored playing that I've been doing it for so long and I was still on like a really small field. Um, so then I switched to baseball, um, and I really loved it. Uh, in little league, it was a lot of fun it was like a lot harder, uh, than soccer for me. So that kind of like kept me going. I I wanted to get better at it. You know, I'd have a bad game and get pissed off and and try and get better. And then I'd get better. And like that, that chase was fun. So I kind of fell in love with that. Um, I also played basketball. I think I started in like fifth or sixth grade. So a little later and I played that all the way through my, uh, sophomore year of high school. Um, so it was baseball and basketball, uh, for most of my life. And then after my sophomore year of high school, I decided to kind of really focus on baseball. Um, and, you know, at the time it was tough, but I think it was the right decision. Yeah, definitely. Things are going well for you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been all right. Yeah. So, so growing up, it looks like you were a, was it two and a half hours away from Washington DC in that range? And then like three and a half from Baltimore. It's more of an hour to DC. Okay. I'm up in Northern Virginia. 
Uh, so I'm okay. kind of outside. So did you go to some uh, national games growing up, or who was your team that you watched? Yeah, yeah, I definitely went to some Nats games. Um, I actually I liked the Red Sox growing up, but it was never really like a, a big deal. You know, I would just follow them. Um, but yeah, I was definitely a, a Nats Red Sox guy. Have you been to Fenway? I have not. No. Okay. So that'll be a bucket list thing. Yeah, for sure. Were there any certain players that you watched growing up that you tried to emulate your game after? Yeah, I always like Bo Bichette. Um, okay. which, that's a tough player to emulate, but I, I wouldn't really say I tried to copy anyone, but I liked watching him. Uh, I like watching Jordan Alvarez just kills a lot of pitchers. Yeah. 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 So I think those are the two big ones for me. Um, yeah. Cool. And then, um, yeah, so, so you went to some games growing up. Did you, uh, being on the East Coast, a lot of the major cities are pretty close together. Did you travel to other cities to watch other teams play or was it mainly stay in that area? Yeah, not really. Um, my family, we definitely, you know, we like sports, but I wouldn't say it's something where we were traveling and go to games. Um, so, yeah, I mainly stayed in the area for that. And you mentioned Bo Bichette. Um, you, grew, you grew up playing shortstop, correct, before you moved to the outfield? Yeah, so when I was young, I was, I was in the outfield. Um, and then early on in high school, I played short. Uh, but then I, I went back to the outfield. I was kind of always a, a center fielder. Like, that was the main position. I just played some in high school. Uh, so it was a little bit of both. And then actually my senior year of high school, I wanted to play short really bad, uh, like in front of all the scouts and everything. I felt like if I could play like a good short, that would be pretty impressive because I think people knew I could play good center field. Uh, but it didn't really work out. Uh, we had some injuries. I wasn't as good as I thought I was at, at short. So <laughs> I went back out on the grass. Did you pitch at all? No, I never. Okay. I didn't want to mess my arm up. Yeah. So you mentioned after sophomore year, you decided to uh, really focus on, in on baseball. Is that when you started to play in the different showcases and then you went on to play with uh, team, team USA? Is that correct? Yeah. So um, I had committed to the University of Virginia my sophomore year of high school. Um, and so I kind of knew baseball was what I was going to be doing. Um, and the thing with basketball, like I loved it, but the winner – I felt like would have been better for me if I was training instead of, you know, going to basketball practice. It was hard to do both. Um, so that kind of played into it. And then I started to get kind of more attention nationally as I got, you know, further along in high school. And then the USA thing was right before my senior year. So I made the trials, which is like the 40 man. Uh, they It starts with like 90 plus people and then they cut it to 40. Um, and then I didn't make the national team, which is 20 something. So that kind of sucked, but it was a good experience. though. I got to play some high level baseball with some cool people. So, yeah. So walk me through that process in high school, when you start getting recruited, you know, at what point did you notice that you were starting to be a standout, uh, recruits or, uh, scouts were talking to you, you know, you commit to university of Virginia, walk me through that entire process. Yeah, so my freshman year of high school, uh, I went to a camp at UVA, um, and it, it didn't work out. They didn't really – they weren't ready to offer me. Um, that may seem pretty early to a lot of people, but that's kind of how it goes. Um, so then following that summer, I did start getting – or I got a lot of attention from schools. Um, I was playing a little bit better. And so then I committed to UVA. Um, but like, I would, I wouldn't say I was like nationally, uh, ranked or anything like that. Like I probably wasn't even the best player in my recruiting class, UVA wise. Um, so like the draft at that time was still like way far, kind of a, a little bit of a reach. Um, but then I kind of, I kept getting better and I, I realized that like I was 
athletic enough to kind of get some of that attention with the draft where, you know, I have the height, I have the, the size and the speed, but I still kind of had to play well. You know, I still, you still have to have the skill because baseball, right. it's not like football or anything where you just, you know, it's only athleticism. It's, it's more. So I kept getting better and better. And then I kind of peaked at the right time, like that summer, right before my senior year with some of the showcase stuff. Uh, I, I did pretty well. I joined a, a pretty uh, highly touted travel team and I played center field for them. So that, that helped. Um, and then, you know, senior year rolls around of high school and that's kind of when all the scouts come out and watch you and you kind of have to make that last jump to, you know, get drafted. Um, and so I was fortunate enough to, you know, have some loud games there uh, and, you know, put myself in a good spot and it all worked out, but definitely happened fast for me. I was never like a projected draft guy really until the very end. <clears throat> and uh, that team, was that the Canes that you were playing on that summer? Yeah. If, were you playing against Ty Pete in the same league? Yeah, we, I played against him in a, in a tournament or two um, okay. in the summer. And then we were together at the USA PDP league, which is, that's the 90, I think it was 96 players who get invited to that camp. Um, we were roommates. I think you talked about this Yeah. Uh, for like two weeks. So I got to know him. We're, we're boys. Um, he's actually coming, coming up here. Um, I think on Sunday he's flying in. So he's going to stay with me and train for a week. Awesome. Is he going to do, do a little blogging while he's up there? I don't know. Yeah, I was thinking about that. We'll see. Talk him into it, yeah. If he pulls the camera out, yeah. Yeah. Um, did you ever face him when he was on the mound? Yeah, I faced him in uh, – he was at East Coast Pro. And he actually struck me out, but there's video there's video footage on the internet. Like, the strike zone was so big, like, <laughs> like white line to white line. Like, I have the video of that bat, like – Strike one is like a two seamer that's in the other box. <laughs> and you can just see like my facial expression, you know, not to have a bad attitude or anything, but I was just like, come on. So yeah, yeah, he got me, but I don't know. Well, you got him <laughs> back with the, uh, the home runs and batting practice, which we'll get into in a little bit up in T-Mobile park. So, yeah. so walk me through that, that process. You know, you play with the Canes that summer you start to really show out for scouts What's that next year look look like? And then heading into 2023 with the draft. Yeah. So the goal for me with the Canes was there's a bunch of, you know, highly recruited kids coming in to play on the team, bunch of competition. So I felt like if I could join that team and if I could win the center field spot and, you know, beat a few kids out, that that would put me in a, in a good position to where I wanted to go. Um, but it was definitely kind of a gamble because, you know, if I if I went and I played for them and I didn't play well for like two tournaments, like I probably wouldn't have gotten much run the rest of the summer and I wouldn't have been in a spot where I, you know, needed to be in. So um, so I was able to do that and that definitely boosted me on a lot of boards and, you know, it helped to play with really good players on that team because scouts would come and, you know, they would see you too. So. So I get done with that summer and I'm kind of like, I'm knocking on the door of, of kind of the first, second round, you know, definitely a later first round. Um, and I meet with a bunch of scouts that winter before the spring. And I kind of realized like, okay, like I have a chance, uh, you know, if I, if I really play well this spring, um, you know, I'll be in a good spot. I can make this happen. Um, and so then go into high school season and it was, it was, Honestly, it was very stressful because, you know, I'd be facing a kid throwing 80, you know, and they're just like spinning me 60 mile on curveballs. And I was like, I was never good at hitting the slow stuff. Like I, I like it when it's hard and I know fastball is coming, which is what the summer was for me. Um, so it was definitely like a up and down year, but I was able to have some big games. Uh, I had a big game with the, uh, the Mariners scouting director there which that helped me a lot with them. Um, and so, yeah, then that season was done and I was still kind of unsure um, because I, I did like the college route, 
you know, I wanted to make sure if I was going to get drafted, it was going to be a, a good opportunity. Um, so then kind of the draft came up and you're just kind of sitting there waiting, you know, really until draft day, um, like who's going to call, what kind of offers you're going to get. Um, so, you know, draft day came and had some offers early and then the Mariners came in uh, right before that 29th pick and, and then it was done. So pretty, pretty cool process, but definitely like a stressful time. Yeah. So you weren't quite sure if you were going to be a first rounder, if you were going to be a second rounder, but you knew somewhere in that range, most likely. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't really have a clue. Um, I mean, I knew like the range, you know, back end first round, um, and then second round, you know, probably would definitely happen, but still like, you never know what's going to happen. Guys could slide and then you could slide too because of that. And yeah, you know, the, the offer might not be where you want it. And so, you don't take it and then you don't get anything better. So like, there's so much that goes into it. Um, but yeah, like luckily it, it all worked out. Backing up just a second. So walking through that, that dra draft combine, the interviews, did you interview with the Mariners or was it just that big game your senior year in high school that solidified it with them? Yeah. Yeah. So I had, I did have an interview with the Mariners, um, but I think the the more important interview was Andy McKay, uh, the assistant GM, came to my house for a meeting. Um, this was like June, right after the high school season. Uh, so we talked and we had a really good meeting, you know, him and, and me and uh, my parents. Uh, so he got to know, you know, a lot more about me. So I think that really helped with the Mariners. Uh, but then at the combine, I did interview with a bunch of teams. And then I interviewed with the Mariners as well with a bunch of, you know, their high level scouts, um, a couple of front office guys were in there, mental coaches in there. So I think that all kind of helped, but, um, but yeah, it, it was, a, it was a cool experience. Is there a standout moment throughout that, ex that experience? Were you able to really soak it in or did it all just kind of fly by before you even knew it? Yeah, I think the combine uh, was was good and, and, it, and it definitely helped me kind of soak it in because I didn't have to play any games. I was so used to like getting ready to play in front of scouts where, you know, you feel like you're either doing really well or you're, you're losing money and losing opportunities. So like the combine, it's like you can sit down and talk to them, which I always felt like I was good at. Um, so that was definitely surreal. Um, and just kind of like sitting in, in the park between meetings like, wow, like, you know, this is pretty cool. You know, I have a couple opportunities that might come that are, you know, pretty cool. So definitely that week was, was, was fun. Yeah. And then you were selected with the 29th overall pick by the Mariners, which is the first time in baseball that they've had the PPI, the prospect promotion incentive. So have you thought at all that you're forever kind of tied to Julio with him winning the rookie of the year that allowed the Mariners to be able to pick you in that spot? Yeah. I didn't really realize it till after the draft, what, what that pick meant. Uh, but it did kind of occur to me, like I knew the Mariners had a lot of first round picks. Um, I didn't really know why till yeah. after the draft. So I think it's pretty cool. Um, hopefully I can return the favor to the front <laughs> office one day. There you go. The PPI. <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty cool. That's awesome. So you get drafted. Um, you don't go up with Ty Pete and Colt Emerson on that trip to Seattle, right? You're a little after them. So yeah. what was yeah, that was, experience like being to Seattle for the first time? It was pretty cool. Uh, it was a really, really fun day. Um, you know, I wasn't really expecting it because I think some teams do it. Some teams don't, some teams do it with, you know, first rounders only. Um, so it was pretty cool to get that opportunity. Um, it didn't, it really didn't feel real. Uh, it was nice to, you know, get the family there too. We got to go out to breakfast with, you know, the scouts and, you know, got to sign the contract and, and meet, you know, the GM and the president of baseball ops and all that. So it was pretty crazy. Uh, the day kind of flew by. Um, it's definitely good to get a taste, but like you don't want that to be, you know, your, your moment in the game, you know. I want right. to get back there you know, not just for a visit. <laughs> I want to play there for a long time. So it's cool. 
Absolutely. So yeah, I mean, walk me through, you walk out on the field in T-Mobile. What are your thoughts? Do you take BP, you meet some of the players, which players did you talk with and how were those conversations? Yeah. Um, it was right before a game. So, um, I mean, I wanted to meet some players, but they're, they're getting ready to go. Um, I met Julio. That was pretty cool. Um, and then I met a few pitchers. Um, I forgot the exact names. I think one of them's Logan something. Logan Gilbert. Yeah. Yeah. He was a nice guy. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that was really it just because when I was in there, it was like five o'clock, like, you know, first pitches at seven, those guys are getting ready to go headphones on type thing. Um, yeah. So, yeah, but that was definitely cool. Um, and, and the BP was pretty fun too. You know, I took a few rounds and, I hadn't had any bombs yet. So but then the last round, I, I kind of got into it. And uh, I know you said we'll hit that later, but that was pretty cool. Yeah. So, I mean, getting right into it, uh, you hit three home runs in that final round. Is that right? To uh, beat out Ty Pete and then also Colt Emerson with the home run, home run title. Mm -hmm. So a little yeah. dragon rights there. <laughs> yeah. I, I had, uh, I had two. I turned around to uh, to Jerry and I was like, "How many, how many I have?" He said two. I said, "Okay, next pitch, home run, drop the bat, I'm done." Love that. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So then you know you do your trip in Seattle. You probably see the Space Needle, some other spots. Do you uh, head down to Arizona from there? Yeah, I did. Um, it was just one full day in Seattle, and then. Uh, the next day, take a flight to Arizona, get ready to go. Yeah. So, so walk me through that experience getting down to Arizona. I think it was, I think Colt told me that you guys grabbed your fishing poles pretty quickly down in Arizona and went fishing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was, it was cool to get down to Arizona. Um, it was fun to meet all the other draft guys, all the college guys, um, and all the, you know, the prospects that were there playing. Um, but yeah, it was, it was cool. It was very hot. Um, we did dabble in some fishing. Um, trying to think of what else we did. It was so hot that like you really, once you were done, you had to, um, to really just hang out in an apartment. You didn't really want to go outside anymore. Uh, but we, we played some video games. Ty's a huge gamer. So he kind of got me into that. Um, but we always go out to eat together. So it was good. It was a good experience. So you get you start playing some professional games down there, the uh, Arizona Rookie League, and then after a certain amount of time, you guys get sent over to Modesto, and it looks like you were you played in about four games last year. Is that correct? Yeah. So I I actually didn't get to play in any like official uh, rookie games, Arizona Complex League games. Okay. Uh, I had a little small hiccup down there with an injury, but um, then I was good to go, and I played in the instructional league, which was like late August to September. So they're not like official pro games, um, but it's more of, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, so I, I got into there and that was, <clears throat> that was after uh, Colt, Ty and, and Aiden, they had already moved up. Uh, so I was on my own out there okay. and then I played pretty well. So then I got moved up to Modesto uh, for the playoffs. Um, and that was, really fun um i really only got a, a small taste of it uh but it was just really cool with with all the guys there a lot of guys on our team were all from the draft so uh that was cool <clears throat> and we had a really good squad it was it was fun like just going into a game i mean we didn't lose when i was up there we won four all four games in a row i know they went on a huge streak though like before yeah. i got up but like when I was there, it just felt like we couldn't lose. It was just like one of these innings, we're going to put up six and guys are going to keep hitting and we're going to keep scoring. Like we're just going to win. So that was pretty fun. Ty Pete's going to hit grand slams in back-to-back -back innings, something like that. And then uh, you guys end up winning the title for Modesto. So yeah, just walk me through that, that experience of your first exposure in pro ball playing in, in front of fans. I don't know how many you had played in front of before, but you know, passionate baseball fans. And then you, you're able to win the title. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. Cause I went from Arizona 
you know, instructional league, which nobody's in the stands, to Modesto playoffs, you know, which playoff games, I didn't really know, but they were, they were electric. There was a good amount of people there. Uh, it was fun. It was very competitive. I feel like a lot of people get this vibe from pro ball that, like, um, you know, it's it's all about yourself. Um, but when I was up there for the playoffs, it was it was very competitive. You know, we wanted to win. No one was really worried about themselves. So it was really cool. So then you head into the off season. You go back to Virginia. You've been grinding this off season with uh, your trainers. You mentioned a little bit of what you're doing, what you've been doing this off season. I guess what what are you looking forward to heading into next year? Now less than a month away from getting down to Arizona again to get get your get cleated up. Yeah, yeah. You know it's hard because I don't really know what to expect. I mean, I I know kind of what's coming with all the games and you know first full year, but you know playing six days a week is going to be a lot. So uh, I'm excited. I don't really want to like put you know a lot of pressure on myself. You know, I want to stay healthy. That's like a big goal of mine. I want to be able to play every day. Um, And then just, you know, execute my process every day. So pretty much everything I can control leading up to the game um, is what I'm looking forward to doing. And all the little stuff like, you know, sleep, nutrition, all that. So yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm really excited. So do you have like a a personal trainer that you use that helps you with nutrition, with your workout routine, with throwing programs, with all those different things, or what does that look like? Yeah. Yeah. So I have, you know, guidance on pretty much all of it, except for the nutrition. I haven't really had anyone specifically tell me exactly what to do there. Um, But I kind of keep track of it myself. And, you know, I try to get a a gram of protein per body weight pound or whatever it is. Um, and you know, try and track the calories so I don't put on weight or or lose weight or anything like that. Uh, but then hitting wise, you know, I have a hitting coach here at home that I've been working with for, you know, three, four years now. Uh, so we're really sharp. He knows me well. Um, that's good. Throwing program. I, I go to a facility. I have one there and then the Mariners are involved in all of it too. You know, they're sending us strength stuff, what we should be doing, talking to hitting coordinators, hitting coaches, you know, what have you been up to? What are you doing? Um, So a lot of stuff like that. Definitely a lot of, you know, helpful people in my life with help with all those different types of things, you know, with development. Absolutely. Um, and then some fan question, questions here. What size bat do you swing? What weight, you know, what, what size glove? Yeah, I swing a 33 and a half inch, uh, Acuna model. That's kind of the one that I'm, uh, leaning towards. I've been playing with a different few, but I think that's the one I'm going to go with. Um, and it's a drop two and a half. So okay. weighs what 31 ounces, um, and then glove size, I think I'm a 12 and three quarter inch outfield glove. Um, okay. I just customize one. So I got one coming for spring training. Awesome. What brand glove is that? It's a Wilson A2K. There you go. Yeah. And then for that bat, the, the Acuna model, is that a more balanced or is it top heavy? Yeah, it's. Um, I think it's a little more end loaded. Uh, but it's not like a, a brick at the end. So it's, yeah. you know, it's not like a, I guess you could say like a power bat. I mean, Acuna does have some power, but <laughs> I feel like I can swing it pretty hard still and get some good bat speed. Yeah. Awesome. So um, I guess who are you ex- most excited to play with in the coming years? And then what are you most excited for this next year? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm, I think I'm most excited to play with the draft guys from from my draft class, you know, just last year, um, just to get to know them better. Um, I think it's cool. We all kind of got drafted together. Then, you know, a lot of us made it to Modesto and won a title. You know, I, I didn't do a whole lot in that. But, um, yeah, so definitely all those guys, and especially the high schoolers, uh, Colt, Ty, and Aiden, uh, we're all, you know, boys and 
it'll be interesting to see, like, we're all going to have a different path, you know, it's going to be different for everyone, but it'll be fun to be along alongside them. Um, and then play, did you say play against? Um, I, I was, yeah. Who are you most excited to play with? Yeah. You could go with who do you want to play against? And then just, what are you looking forward to this year? Yeah. Playing against. Um, so I have a buddy, he went to high school, like nearby me, uh, Bryce Eldridge. Um, he was drafted 16th overall to the giants. So isn't he a two way guy in like six, seven? Yep. Yep. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I, I actually I played against him in my first game in Modesto. Um, he was on the the Giants, San Jose Giants. Um, I played against him five times in high school, and so it was always a heated battle. <laughs> and, yeah, so playing against him will be fun. Um, and then what I'm kind of most looking forward to this year, I would just say, you know, meeting new people in the organization – I've met a lot, but I haven't met, you know, everyone and, and kind of establishing a good relationship with people at my affiliate, um, coaches, hitting coaches, all that. Um, so yeah, just meet new people. Who would you say is your favorite big leaguer today? And is there someone that you see yourself as like profile wise in the big leagues that you could compare yourself to? Yeah. Um, Favorite big leaguer, probably Bo Bichette. Okay. Um, and you were done. Yeah. Profile wise, like the most ideal scenario, I think for me would be like an athletic Yordan, like a, a Yordan <laughs> to play like a good center field. <laughs> one of the best hitters in the league and also one of the, the fastest in the league. I mean, it looks like you uh, had one of the fastest 30 yard dashes at the combine. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's the goal to be the best player, you know, so. And then, and then what's your favorite thing to do outside of baseball, off the baseball field to relax, de-stress? Yeah, I like fishing a lot. Um, so I'm excited to get into that, especially when I'm up in Washington um, with some of the affiliates there at, at some point. Uh, I've heard there's some good fishing there on the coast. Um and then I actually, I like following the the stock market. I got okay. I knew it in high school. Like I was just sitting in class, you know, market opens at nine 30. I, I'd tune into it. I was, I was trading it a little bit, you know, reading charts, reading graphs, all that. There you so, go. Yeah. That's something that I kind of like to do to get my mind off, off the game, but it's hard on the West coast, you know, cause the market opens at six 30. So I'm, I'm not waking up for that, but <laughs> <laughs> got to get up a bit, bit, bit earlier over here for sure. Yeah. So if you were going to school, would you be majoring in like finance or something like that then? Yeah, I'm taking uh I'm taking a few classes actually. Okay. Um, in in finance? Yeah, that, that's the major. Um, but cool. I'm only taking like one class a semester and it's like condensed into eight weeks. So like mathematically it'll take me twelve years to graduate or something. <laughs> uh but you know, why not when I have the time? Definitely. And I actually uh, double majored in finance and marketing at Washington state. So, but I mean, really it's like, you can learn so much on YouTube and YouTube yeah. is the biggest resource and it's, you, you learn, you know, so much in school, but then it's all that you can try to learn outside that really multiplies over time. But yeah. Well, cool. Um, I guess one more question. So Bryce Eldridge, you uh, grew up playing high school baseball with him. So do you know if he's still a two way with the giants and did you face him on the mound, um, in high school? Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I think he's still a two way. Um, I mean, he can definitely do both at the pro level. Um, I'm not sure the, the logistics of that though, but, but yeah, I faced him a bunch in high school. Um, I want to say it was around like three, three or four times I faced him and it was always, you know, pretty big deal just because we were kind of the two bigger draft guys in our area. So all the scouts would come to that game. You know, if they're going to fly in, they're coming to that game. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. Um, I actually, I faced him in the state championship. He came in to close the game. Uh, so my last at bat of high school was against him. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. How'd that end up? Did. 
Yeah, so we lost that game by one run, um, unfortunately. But we beat them in the regional championship, which is like one below the state. And then we played them again in the state championship. Um, okay. but yeah, we had some good battles. We, we were definitely back and forth. Um, yeah, it was it was fun. And that was definitely, you know, a big part in me getting drafted just because, you know, when, when I faced him, that's when everyone was there and, you know, I had some good games. So it was cool. Awesome. Well, Johnny, really appreciate your time today. I'm looking forward to seeing you progress next year. Best of luck as you head down to Arizona. And uh, when you do make it up to Everett Aquasox, there's an affiliate down here in Hillsboro, Oregon, which is kind of where I'm from. So I'll be on the field down there interviewing some guys. So look forward to meeting you in person. And from all of us Mariners fans, best of luck next year. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me.